Hello, welcome to Ginevra's running commentary number 42, I think, 42. I am currently in a rainy forest in Brisbane and so that is why I'm slightly damp but not wearing winter clothes. <laughs> um, today I'm just thinking about thinking and doing. When you are learning a technical manoeuvre, shifting something in your body. When is it useful to think about that? And when is it useful just to do? For example, let's think about breathing. Now, if you lie on your back on the floor and put your hands on your tummy and feel that gentle movement of your belly up and down, you're feeling that very easy flow and that's going to be useful when you're singing. So you might do some hissing and buzzing and you might do some fricative sounds, voiced fricative sounds, to connect that movement of your belly with your voice. If you then go straight to singing, singing a, a line of a song, and concentrate on your belly moving in as you do it, that's missing out a lot of vital stages along the way. And will confuse your body because thinking and doing happen at slightly different times. Even though your perception is that you are giving, you're thinking, giving an instruction to your body and then your body is doing, it actually happens the other way around. The doing happens first, the thinking follows on very fast and will rationalize and maybe adjust the doing. But the doing happens first. So ideally, we want the doing to be on a path that we trust, that implicit learning that is subconscious, that we have embedded in our bodies, that we trust just to happen. How do we get that to that stage from lying on the floor hissing and buzzing? So little incremental shifts. Stand up and do the hissing and buzzing. Go back to lying down. Lie on your side, go onto all fours, stand up again, hiss and buzz. Don't overthink it, just let your body assimilate that sensation and that information. Then you move on to maybe a little vocal exercise, maybe a slide up and down. And again, just do. Don't analyse, don't create, don't make, just do and trust. Go toggle backwards and forwards from the hissing to the singing, back to the hissing, back to the singing, so that your body will make those connections. Then you can move on. So the next stage might be a short passage of, of a melody. Do that on a semi-occlusion so that you're taking out all the other variables and your body is connecting that hissy breath sensation to the idea of changing pitch and sustaining through a phrase. And then back again to the hissing and buzzing so that you are again toggling backwards and forwards and maybe go through the slide and onto the tune again. Next stage might be to open up to sing the tune on a vowel or on uh, some pho repeated phonemes like z z z or glee gla glee gla or meow 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 and then again go back and just keep doing that and don't expect it all to happen on day one it's every day building a little bit a little bit a little bit maybe three or four weeks down the line your body will remember how to do it patience and trust when you get on to further phrases so that you are maybe singing a whole page of a song. Again, resist the temptation to control that body. Resist the temptation to think about pulling in and think about the motion and think about the doing. Trust the process. You may observe the process. You might put your hands on your tummy and observe it's happening. Mindful observation is very different from controlling behavior. So observe be mindful. Again, trust the process. If anything goes wrong, if anything doesn't quite work, what do you do? You take a step back and go back, back to the stage before. So these are building 
the little pieces that you connect together into patterns which connect together into the whole physical and mindful and emotional maneuver in your body.